Well, God bless you. It's time for Bible study again. I want you to go and call a loved one, a family, a friend. Tell them, come on. Let's go into a journey in the Bible. It's always good to get into the Word because in the Word of God is life. In the Word of God is peace, joy, and happiness. So, yes, <clears throat> when you've been bombarded by the trials and the issues of life, it's always good to get into your word and let's just see, amen, what the Lord is saying to us, amen. Uh, so we want to, again, uh, let's prepare ourselves to receive from the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we honor you and we praise you. We bless you, Lord, and we give you all the glory for just being the Lord of our lives. We ask you, Lord God, to open up our minds that we might receive what thus saith the Lord. And we thank you now for this opportunity to go into your word, reveal the mysteries and the, the hidden uh, uh, nuggets and secrets, Lord God, that you said if we seek, we will find, knock, and the door shall be open to us. We thank you for this now. Your will be manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, grab your Bibles now. We're looking at this uh, time, Galatians chapter 5. I want you to go into, amen, the word of God of Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. Uh, it's a little bit different wording, but I think it's uh, definitely... Uh, better for our understanding and a little bit more clarity. And uh, we want to, uh, I mean, uh, again, uh, just invite you to, to follow along. We may have the, the scripture text on the screen if you're not able to get your Bibles. Uh, but it's important, again, that we ask you to uh, be engaged. Seek the word out for yourself. That's important. The Bible says that we study to show ourselves approved workmen that need not be ashamed rightly, amen, dividing the word of truth. So it's important that you, 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 you get this word and get it engrafted into your memory and into your spirit uh, for such time that you uh, would need it in your day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. All right, Galatians, Galatians, uh, the letter that Apostle Paul wrote, wrote to the church in Galatia. <clears throat> and we're looking at the fifth chapter here, starting at verse number 13. And this is important because we, uh, as believers, we want to uh, walk in freedom and walk in, in liberty, in, in truth. Uh, our walk with Christ should not be uh, a chore, but it should be something that we do out of gladness and we should do it out of appreciation uh, and realizing that this is, amen, a, a, a life that, yeah, we may have uh, some persecution and we may have some hardships, but at the same time, because of our relationship with the Lord, he promised never to leave us, neither would he forsake us, but he would be with us even to the end of the world. And that is the joy, that is the, the, the confidence that the believer and the Christian has, that we're never alone, we're always with him and he is with us. And uh, that's something that, amen, we uh, don't have to question. We don't have to have a doubt in our hearts and our minds, but we can always be assured that Christ is with us. So we have here Galatians chapter five, uh, beginning at verse number 13. Again, in the Amplified, I read, for you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and 
opportunity or excuse for selfishness, but through love, you should serve one another. Hallelujah. Here it is, Apostle Paul, the apostle that uh, expounded and broke open to us the secrets of grace. Uh, what, what the unmerited favor of God really meant to the believer. Uh, and, and, and we do understand that, that Christ uh, uh, talked about it and, and we understood other um, teachers and other apostles taught it, but Apostle Paul was the one that really manifested and showed us the, 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 the depth of the grace of God in action. And so here he is uh, beginning to go through a particular dissertation to help us to understand as believers, as Christians, uh, that we should not take that uh, opportunity uh, because we live not under the law, not under uh, strenuous rules and regulations, but because we live uh, uh, by our faith and we live under the grace of God, that we should not let that grace and the liberty that God has given us be an opportunity for us to cater to our flesh. And that's simply to say that we, we uh, should understand and as, as we become mature in our walk with God and mature in our relationship with God, that uh, our relationship with God is more important to us than succumbing to our fleshly passions and our fleshly desires. Uh, because uh, the truth of the matter, as long as you're here on this earth, you're always going to have some level of temptation because we are born in sin according to the world and we're shaping in iniquity. So that is our nature, our, our, our nature. You, you can even see it from uh, babies, little kids. You don't have to teach them how to, to be disobedient. You don't have to teach them how to lie. Amen. <laughs> But it's just in their nature. You you ask them, did they do? No, ma'am, it wasn't me. No, sir, I didn't do it. And they know all the while, yeah, they did do it, but there's that fear of the repercussions or the fear of getting in trouble that causes them to lie, which is not an excuse, but it's a part of our nature. And so this is the thing that we, as uh, humans, as, as uh, uh, just people, we have to deal with the, uh, the mindset of veering off to, to do things and to say things that are more appealing to our flesh than to actually do things that are according to righteousness. And it is a decision that we have to make, even after having professed being saved and, and knowing God. It is a decision that we have to make to live holy. Amen. And, and once we make that decision, as I've taught many times, then, of course, we're filled with the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost. It com comes in and it gives us the strength. It gives, gives us the power to do the right thing. It gives us the power to to. to live a righteous life. And that's the way uh, uh, we, we, we want to look at it. Yes, grace is God's unmerited favor that's imputed unto all mankind. Amen. And even while we were yet sinners, we were given an opportunity through by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to have a relationship with God our Father. But we cannot, amen, because we have this liberty, we cannot allow this freedom, as Paul said, to be an incentive for us to uh, cater to our flesh. So, well, just because I'm, 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 I'm not under 
uh, bondage. I'm, I'm not under the law. Uh, because the law, uh, it taught that if, yeah, if you did uh, 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 sin, if you transgressed the law, yeah, they, they could, you know, uh, take out different uh, uh, punishments against you, uh, stone you. Uh, 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 they, you know, the, the law even at one point uh, uh, required an eye for an eye. If you put out somebody else's eye, you had to lose your own eye. Yeah, so it was strenuous requirements in the law. But after Christ came and paid the ultimate sacrifice, he said, no, we're putting away the, the, the requirements of the law because I've satisfied the ultimate requirement in the fact that I sacrificed my body. I gave my body as the ultimate sacrifice for sin. So there's no other requirement, no other uh, uh, sacrifice that anybody has to make other than the fact that they believe. And then once you believe through by your faith, then, amen, the, the, the mercies of God are imputed through uh, your faith. And so this is where we, we, we see here, and the word is saying that we uh, have only one requirement and that is that we love one another. And that's so important. That's, amen, one of the most important things that we as, as believers have to remember is that the grace that God has given to us through his son Jesus is so important that we use that opportunity to show grace and to show compassion to our fellow man. Yeah, and that's the reason why we, we're not, the word of God say, judge not that you be not judged. So we, we can't, uh, amen, uh, take the grace of God upon ourselves and then we see our brother, our sister, someone in the world doing wrong or taking in a fault and then we want to exact the harshest penalty upon them because they are in sin or they're in wrong. No, that's, that's, that's not what God gave us his grace for. He gave us his grace so that we, in turn, should give grace to one another, to our fellow man, that we should love one another. Amen? Verse 14 says, For the whole law, concerning human relationships is compiled with in the one precept you should love your neighbor as you do yourself hallelujah now that's powerful because so many of us will give ourselves chance after chance after chance and we know that we've made mistakes we know that we've Sometimes not even made mistake, but just just outright did wrong. We just outright disobeyed. Yeah, I fall. I made errors, amen. But I know that it was the grace of God that kept me and that covered me. So then, that is why my heart pours out, and my heart is of compassion when I see my brothers and my sisters, those that may have fallen, those that may have had errors in their life, to show them compassion is a representation of the compassion and the love uh, that God showed to me. The grace that he has given me is what I uh, emulate when I see my sisters, my brothers uh, uh, caught up or taken in a fault. That to understand that we all have uh, fallen short of the glory of God. And there's nothing that, that any of us have any room to boast of because you have to understand that even if you hadn't uh, uh, committed a physical uh, 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 fall or physical fault, God even tries your intentions. God even knows the intents of your heart. And so <clears throat> we, we, we know even the word of God tells us that the, the, the heart is the most a uh, 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 wicked and, and, and corrupt thing there is. So we, we know that we, we can't put any confidence in our flesh. 
we always have to be in a position of humility and be in a position of, of seeking God for guidance, seeking God for his mercy and his loving kindness because had he not given us his son to be the propitiation for our sin or the, or the uh, uh, sacrifice to take our uh, uh, consequence or to take our judgment, then we would all be doomed to hell. We would all have to face uh, hell, death, and the grave. But it's because Christ loved us so much. He gave his life. He gave his uh, body to be beaten and his body to be sacrificed. They stretched him high and hung him wide just for us so that we could have a through way, so that we could have a right to salvation. And so this is the reason why we shouldn't uh, ever hold anything against our brother or our sister. Uh, we should always look to, to, to show love and to show compassion uh, in the fact that that's what God did for us. He showed us the ultimate. He gave us life when we should have received death. So this is where we are. We should, amen, according to the word, uh, with one precept, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many, uh, how many of us would wish death on ourselves? Now, I'm not talking about anybody with schizophrenic or doesn't, doesn't have their, their right mind, but cognitively, the, 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 the rule is in every man, the first rule or the first law of nature is self-preservation. Everybody wants to do whatever they can to stay alive. And so then that's the same way that we should love our neighbor. That's the same way uh, that we should, you know, love one another. And, and, and there was a story that the, that the Word of God uh, talks about when uh, uh, the, 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 the master began to talk and and uh, tell the rich young ruler uh, about uh, being in, being committed, and he began to let him know uh, that yes, you should. Uh, he asked him, did he know that what the scripture was? And he said, yes, that you should love uh, your neighbor as yourself. And the 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 question uh, rang out to the master from the rich young ruler, well, who is my neighbor? And that is where we got the uh, uh, beautiful dissertation where the master taught us about uh, the, the, uh, the Samaritan, amen, the good Samaritan that passed by and saw uh, the man by the highway that had been beaten almost to death and robbed, amen. But because he uh, secured the man and he... He put him in to the end and told them to take care of him. And whatever the cost was when he came back through, that he would pay for it. And it, 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 a man at that particular time began to cause a thought process in the mind of the young ruler because it, it, at the same time he was taught that uh, the, uh, the Samaritans excuse me, didn't have any dealings with the Jews. But in the story, uh, the master showed where uh, the Levites passed them by, the, 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 the Pharisees passed them by, those that should have been there to help were not. They should have shown a measure of compassion, but they didn't. But it was the one that uh, was considered to be ungodly, the one that was considered to be not uh, uh, pure of heart, that had the compassion enough to take up this uh, Jew that was that was beaten and that was uh, 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 taken advantage of, and actually he showed the kindness and the love that should have been shown from those that were of the same uh, belief and those that were 
quote unquote, uh, of Christ, uh, of the church. But this is the reason why uh, we have to be careful that we don't get caught up in trying to thumb our nose and, and look down on people that may be uh, caught up in uh, drug addiction, uh, immorality, homosexuality, uh, alcoholism, lying, backbiting, cheating, whatever their sin, whatever their issue is, that is not for us to be in an a, a, a act of judgment. We, in our uh, uh, sanctification, in our holy mind, we should have enough love, the love of Christ, to show compassion to them and help them understand that, hey, it doesn't matter to me what you pass. It doesn't matter to me what you've done. You're still my brother. You're still my sister. And this is where the word is being clear to us here that we should love our neighbor as we do so. The same uh, 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 grace that we would give to ourselves, we should give to our fellow man. Hallelujah. Verse number 15 says, But if you bite and devour one another in uh, partisan strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. Glory to God. God has given us a, a, a warning here that we have to be careful that we don't be so critical of one another, you know, because if we do, if we get so caught up in that uh, uh, biting is simply to, to say that we're constantly in, in conflict, coming against, putting our mouth, putting our judgment on one another, that uh, we will ultimately be consumed by one another. And that's sad. Because we as believers, we should show love to one another. We shouldn't be so quick to lay judgment. Oh, you did this. You did that. You did me wrong, so I'm going to do you wrong. That's not the will of God. That's not the way of love. That's not what Christ did, amen, to uh, uh, the, the, the centurion and for those that beat him and those that stabbed him in the side. No, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even when he had, amen, been uh, beaten and, and bruised and was hanging up on the cross, he still had a heart of compassion. If we're going to be named the name of Christ, if we're going to be called Christians, then it's high time that we act like Christ. It's high time that we have that same spirit of compassion that same spirit of love that we have. And during this time, this is when, amen, the Lord is requiring for us to open up our hearts. Uh, we, we've got to show the world that we are willing to accept in those that are looking for a way of escape, those that are looking uh, for, for, for help during this pandemic during this time of of, of, of uh, virus and, and sickness this is the time that the Lord is calling for us to take a step of faith to open up our hearts to show love to our brothers and sisters our, our fellow man those that uh, are lost in debauchery and, and sin we got to be the example We've got to be the ones to show them that, yes, Christ is alive and well, and he's living in us. Yes, this is, this is our season. This is our opportunity to show that love. Hallelujah. But we can't show the love that we need to if we're constantly in conflict with one another. Nobody wants to come in and, and be in a situation where, they see a bunch of bickering and fussing and 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 uh, bite biting and and uh, and uh, finger pointing going on. People want to come into an environment where they can feel 
the love. And that's the reason why, amen, when the Lord placed me as the presider over this ministry, he told me to name this house, the house where love is Lord. That's so important. And we should not only just let that be magnified when we're in the church house, but we should let our hearts, our sanctuary, the sanctuary of our spirit be the house where love is Lord. Because that love is what shows forth to the world. And that love is what draws men and draws women to Christ. The word of God said, through loving kindness, have I drawn, drawn you? So if it took loving kindness for him to draw us, well, what do you think it's going to take to draw the world? It's going to take that same love, that same kindness that we have to exhibit, that we have to show. Amen. Through loving kindness, we'll reach the world. Through loving kindness, 10,000 souls just a drop in the bucket. But it's through loving kindness, not backbiting, not finger pointing, not being judgmental. That is what reach the loss. Finally, in verse 16, it says here, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, of human nature, with God, without God. Hallelujah. But I say, walk and live. Walk and live. Habitually, as a as a habit, as a thing that you do constantly in the Holy Spirit. So that's something that we can't do one day on and one day off. No, we have to make it a constant practice to walk in the Spirit, to follow after the Spirit, to let the Spirit guide us and lead us. Because when we allow the Spirit to have free course in our life, then we'll always be able to defeat the lusts of the flesh. If you allow the spirit to have free course, it'll keep you from lashing out if somebody say something that you don't like. It'll do you. It'll bring you back down. Well, you would be, you know, somebody say, I, I go from zero to a hundred real quick. I get, I'm, I'm always ready to, 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 Snap back. I'm always well. If you you walking and living in the spirit, then you won't be able to just snap back. And you because your spirit is constantly telling you no. That ain't the way to respond. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to handle it. And so many times in our flesh, oh my God, it makes us feel like you're gonna be letting these people just run all over you. You're going to let this person get away with it. And truthfully, we have to understand that nobody is getting away with anything. God is our, our, our God. God is our keeper. He said that what's right, he's going to repay. He is the one that, amen, exacts vengeance for us. We don't have to worry about nobody getting away with anything cause, because God is in control. He's going to take care of those that come against us, those that spitefully use us. But a lot of times we're getting in situations because it's feel comfortable, because we want to strike back, because we want to respond negatively. And the whole time the Lord is saying, no, that's not my way. That's not how I want you to do I want you to show restraint. I want you to show the love of Christ through how you can restrain yourself and not lash back out. Because whether you recognize or not, somebody's always watching. Yeah, somebody's always not looking, and they're looking at you saying, yeah, you're a believer and you're a Christian, but if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, how you act like that? that, that that's not the way a Christian should respond. That's not the way a believer should respond. And so we have to be careful 
of what our actions are. We have to be careful of how we respond because we want to exhibit the attributes of Christ. We want to exhibit, even during this time of, of, of fear and anxiety, we want to be bold. We want to be strong. Now, yes, we definitely want to make sure that we are uh, being safe. We don't want to be out there and just, you know, being frivolous and not uh, uh, being, being careful to protect ourselves and our families. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to exhibit fear because that's not of Christ. That's not the way Christ uh, uh, came to help us. He didn't help us by being afraid of us. He helped us by coming down, fellowshipping with us, supping with us. And as he's always said, if you allow him to, he'll come in and he'll live with you. But it's a decision that you have to make. Well, God bless you now. This is another journey through the Bible. Just an opportunity to show you the grace of God in action. That is to say that it's not enough for us to just accept and receive God's grace, but it's important that we exhibit his grace through by doing unto others as we would have others to do unto us, or as the word of God said even more succinctly, that we should love our neighbors just as we love ourselves. And that's what God is requiring for us. Even during this time of pandemic, you don't have to allow your fear uh, to take over what it is God has required for you to show love to your fellow man. Well, God bless you now. I want you to know that we love you. I want you to know that God's still in control. And even in the time of this pandemic, God has not forgotten about you. Well, God love you now and we love you too. Want you to know that you have to, again, feed your faith and starve your fear to death. There may be somebody that does not know Christ in the pardoning of their sin. Well, we want to take this moment now to lead you to Christ Simply, just bow your head and repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I love you, and I thank you for giving your life just for me. And because you died for me and rose again, I believe, Lord God, that you are the Savior of my soul. And I, Lord, ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, all of my transgressions. And I know that because you died and rose again, I can rise from a sin, from a life of sin and immorality into a new life of salvation and a new life of, uh, of a new life of eternal life with you, Lord God. And I bless you and I praise you and I thank you now. I invite you to live in me as I live for you. I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you can believe it, it's already done. According to your faith, amen, it's already done. Now, God bless you. We thank God for all of our first responders. Thank God for all of those that are still on the front line, our doctors and nurses, our coroners, those that are, are working in the trenches to, to help uh, see about those that are in need want to remind you, be careful now. Let's still practice social distancing. We know our governor is, is opening back up the state, but we still have the responsibility to take care of our own selves and be safe and be careful out there. And uh, don't, don't let anything uh, uh, that you can control cause you to get sick. So God bless, God bless you and we love you now. Continue to Keep us in prayer as we do the same for you. God bless you until next time. Yours truly, Apostle Felix Rebels. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. If you have any questions or comments about the lesson, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at efvm4460 at gmail.com. Send us a DM or post your question in the comments section below. We look forward to hearing from you. 
Greetings, everybody. My name is Pastor A, and I pastor at Christ Deliverance Temple, Columbus, Georgia. We are here as part of Evangelical Faith Vision Ministries. We are so excited about what God is doing in this ministry. We want to challenge you to sow because this place is fertile ground. We know that God has given a seed to you, and you want to plant it in this ground. You want to be a part of what God is doing here. God has given us manifold testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders, and you want want to be a part of it. We want to challenge you to name your seed, claim what God is doing. I speak in declaring the decree that God is getting ready to give a supernatural increase just because of your seed. So we want you to click the link at the bottom. There's a link down there. Givelify. Give on Givelify. You can give on PayPal. You can send us an old-fashioned check. But whatever it is, we want you to be a part of this. Get in on this sword. The time is now. Don't wait. We declare and decree that we'll never be broke another day in our life because we got a seed in our hand. We talk to our money at Evangelical Faith Vision Ministry. We say, seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow. Get the overflow and bring it on back. You need to be a part of it. So, 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 so. God bless.